Someone once referred to me as a rolling stone. You know, as in the Bob Dylan song, like a rolling stone. And that song, Dylan asked, how does it feel to be on your own with no direction home? A complete unknown, like a rolling stone. I know how that feels. That person who described me as such was right. I was in such deep despair at the time, feeling alone and untethered to anything or anyone. I was only 19 and newly disowned by my family for rejecting the religion of my childhood, my parents' religion. I was raised Jehovah's Witness well, not entirely. I was born in the Catholic faith and was even baptized in that faith. Around the time I turned eight, my parents, my father specifically, became convinced that the Jehovah's Witnesses had it right when it came to God and religion. And so that we became. My entire life revolved around being a witness. Everyone I associated with in any meaningful way was a witness. We, my immediate family, we put up with extended family members and other non-witnesses, but they weren't a part of our lives. Fellow witnesses were more important than any family member, no matter who. This was something I came to learn firsthand when I could no longer defend my belief. Bottom line, I no longer believed. Walking away meant foregoing any relationship with my parents, siblings, and my friends. And remember, that was my entire life. With Jehovah's Witnesses, when a baptized member, which I was, leave the faith, they are shunned and existing members are to disassociate themselves from them. So the good witnesses that my family was disowned me. Imagine waking up one day and suddenly, without any preparation, to find yourself completely alone in the world. Without friends, family. That was the situation I found myself in as a teenager. I felt lost, alone, and unwanted for quite a long time. And calling me a rolling stone, that individual saw my disconnectedness and named it. But he did nothing else. He left me without hope. And I remember years later telling someone else about my situation. And as he listened, he became sadder and sadder. After I was done, we were both quiet for a moment. Then he responded, well, at least you still have them. Both of my parents are dead. Now, I could understand how traumatizing that could be. But was that the time to bring that up and completely disregarding my own feelings about what I was going through? And at a different time, I remember telling somebody else my situation again, and she responded in the same way because she was estranged from her daughter. And she even felt some sort of kinship towards my mother and could understand where she was coming from. Again, it is painful not to have your daughter in your life, especially if you want a relationship with her. But was that the time? And does that mean my feelings were not valid? You know, exchanges such as those really added to my despair. So over time, I just learned to not share of myself with people like that. What would have given me hope would have been for them to listen to me and hear my pain, my hurt, that would have been quite helpful to me at the time. 
And yes, as we look at the world around us, there just seems to be a lot of despair in it. And how we experience this despair can be exacerbated when we are dealing with our own misery. But I am here to tell you that we have it within us to give hope to another if we choose to. We hold the power to uplift another. Sometimes it takes only a simple gesture, like a smile. Other time it demands that we go the distance. One of my favorite quotes is by McLaren, Ian McLaren, and it goes, be kind for everyone you meet is fighting a hard battle. If we went about our exchanges with that thought in mind, imagine how differently we might engage one another. We might want to lessen the burden, give hope. We might offer a kind word or gesture. We might offer a shoulder to cry on or embracing arms. We might be willing to give more of ourselves, share what we have. We might be more inclined to bear witness and be present for one another. We might be more willing to give without having to be asked or thanked. And we might do so much more. It is not a waste of time. Following the separation from my family, I found many reasons to feel hopeful because of the kindness of so many people. Like new friends who invited me to their homes during the holidays so I wouldn't have to spend them alone. Or like the parents of one of those friends who adopted me into their family and included me in their activities. The interesting thing is that friend and I are not as close as we used to be, but I continue to have a relationship with her family. Now, my friend Shirley is one of those glass half full kind of people. And I, and I don't mean in, in a lighthearted way either. She is deeply spiritual and cares about people. Frankly, she has become my spiritual guide. She's so full of optimism and sees the bad as well as the good in most situations. And when I share with her, I, I don't feel minimized or dismissed. And it isn't that she fixes the problem, it's, it's that She's present and doesn't get into a comparison of woes with me. Shirley and many other kind souls that I've met along life's journey have become family to me and have played a major role in my healing from the loss of my biological family. They have loved me into the space that I am today. Now I know my particular situation can't be unique. Yes, the details might be different. Nevertheless, there are many who at one point or another have found themselves alone in the world and could use a little hope. There are many who are lost and in despair and could not see a way out. Some of those Many might be people you know, people you care about. They might be hoping that someone might reach out. You can be that someone. Offer them hope. Let's offer them possibilities. That's what hope does, right? It offers possibilities. Maybe a way out of a hard spot. A way out of a terrible time in someone's life. Don't miss that opportunity. Don't miss an opportunity to uplift another. 
And may we always choose to give hope.